All right, hey guys, how's it going today? Um, today, if you can't already tell, we're going to be working uh, with systems of equations. So what I have right here, uh, this is a system. And you know it's a system because um, I have two variables and two equations. So I have a y and x, y and x, and I have one, two equations. So that's what makes this a system. Um, it's always going to be made up by the number of variables you have is going to be the number of equations you have. So if I had three variables like y, x, z, then uh, I'd have another one that said y, x, z, and then a third one that said y, x, z. Um, and the, in order to solve, what you're looking for uh, when you solve for this is you're looking for an x value and a y value that uh, is going to give you the solution to this one. But that same x and y value that you have is going to also be an answer here. So what I want to take a look at is, uh, you know, if I put in uh, a 4 for x, well, 4 minus 2, that's going to give me a 2 for y. So I'd have a 4 comma 2 as my answer. Uh, but right here, if I put in a 4 for x, okay, uh, so negative 2 times 4, that gives me 8. 8 plus 7, well, that didn't give me a 2. That gave me 15. So you see how it doesn't uh, exactly work for the second one? Um, so we're looking for a number that actually works for both. And uh, you do this in your head all the time, especially in riddles, things like that. Um, but also, uh, you'll, you'll see practical applications for this. Uh, but that's what systems are. And uh, today we're going to be looking at solving these by graphing them. Okay, um, so right here uh, we're going to have, uh, in blue, I'm going to graph this equation. Well, I know my y-intercept is going to be negative 2 and my slope is going to be 1 over 1. So negative 2 is right here. And then... Uh, my slope is going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So I'm just going to kind of cheat a little bit. I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to create a line using my cool tools. Okay. Oh, don't want it. I want it to be blue. Okay. There we go. Blue. All right. Beautiful. And then also in the other direction. There we go. Down 1 over 1. All right. So uh, that's our first one. Now let's kind of do my uh, second one, and I'm going to do that one in red now. Okay, so, uh, you know, my slope is equal to negative 2 over 1, and then my y-intercept is equal to positive 7. So I'm going to go up here, 5, 6, 7, and I'm going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and... Uh, you know, make your line from that. So let's see. I'm going to go like this. Okay. And where they intersect, right here, right? Oh, don't want a line right there. Pen, thank you. Where they intersect is going to be the answer to your equation. So if I look here, that's going to be, well, let's see, 1, 2, 3, and then up 1. So my answer is going to be 3, comma 1. That's the intersection. That's the point where both of those lines are the same. So let's actually go ahead and check my answer now with the 3 and the 1. So I'm going to uh, put 3 in and the first one. So y equals, actually, hold on, not y equals. I'm going to put 1 equals 3 minus 2. Is that true? Well, let's see, 3 minus 2, that gives me 1, that equals 1, so check, that's the first one. And now for our second one right here, I'm going to put in 1, does that equal negative 2 times 3 plus 7? Let's see, that's going to give me negative 6, question mark, plus 7, negative 6 plus 7, well that equals 1, does that, alright, so I have 1 over here, 1 over there, 1 on both sides works for both of them. So the number, the coordinate that I had, this would be your answer. I would say 3 comma 1, that is my answer. All right, so um, what we have here, we're doing the exact same thing. If you feel comfortable, you want to attack this problem, go ahead and attack this problem, um, but we're going to work it out. 
And uh, what we're going to do here is, uh, I notice here that my first equation, that one's ready to go. But my second equation, I can't really graph this um, unless it looks in the form y equals mx plus b. Okay, so I need to move it into that form. And in order to do that, oh, didn't want to move that. Um, in order to do that, didn't want to move that one either. Okay, well, that's going to stay right there. Um, we have to solve for this equation in terms of y. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to subtract 6x, subtract 6x. So I have negative 3y equals, those aren't like terms. So I'm going to have negative 6x plus 9. And then I'm going to divide by negative 3. Divide this one by negative 3. Divide that one by negative 3. So that cancels out. And now I'm going to have y is going to be equal to 2x minus 3. Okay, so that is the second one that we have. All right, so um, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and graph this first one. All right, I want to graph the first one that I have here in blue. I want to start here at negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1 okay and let's see my line when it gets going blue line please up 2 over 1 there it is alright now for my second one um, well also that one is uh, the same thing so it starts right here it goes up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1 well, where is this one intersecting? Because if I if I were to draw a line here of this graph, you know, there we go. Oh, not blue, red, please. Thank you. It goes over it the exact same way, up to over one, the exact same thing. Well, uh, what we say here is that every single x y pair that is a solution. So we say we have infinite. Uh, solutions. When you have that together, you have an infinite amount of solutions. Can keep on going. Um, all right, so let's take a look at this one. All right, so we have to do a little bit of work here. Um, and what I want to do is actually, let's kind of do this one on a calculator this time. Um, we still need to get into a slope intercept form. So for my first one, let's see, we'll do a uh, my first one, we're going to do it right here. Negative 3x plus y equals 4. Okay, so we're going to add 3x. We're going to add 3x. Okay, those aren't like terms, so I can't combine them, but I get y equals 3x plus 4. Okay, and then my second one over here, so number 2. We're going to do number 2 off to the right, so x minus 1 third y equals 1 so we subtract the x subtract the x those aren't like terms so I have negative one third y equals negative x plus 1 and then we're going to multiply here by a negative 3 multiply this one by a negative 3 then multiply this one by a negative 3 so that's gone so I'm left with y equals well negative negative that cancels out that gives me 3x and then uh, 1 times negative 3 is going to give me a negative 3. Okay. Uh, and so like I said, I wanted to kind of do this one with um, a calculator just to sh kind of show you how it looks. So I'm bringing up my calculator right here. I'm going to put it right there in the middle. Okay. Let's turn it on. All right. So uh, this calculator is going to, uh, this is the TI-84. Uh, plus, that's the one I use in my classroom all the time. That's going to be the most common one. Um, if you need help with another calculator, if you're using, if your class uses a different calculator, uh, just let me know. But you can get this one for free on your phone or on your computer. Just check out MrHernandezTeaches.com under Calculator Tools. Uh, there's a, a video I made about how to get it on your phone or computer. So uh, let's go into y equals, and we're going to put in our first one, y equals 3x plus 4. Um, we're going to put it here into y1. So I'm going to type in 3x 
plus 4. And let's see how that looks. Graph. All right, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. Now my second one, we're going to put it in 3x minus 3. All right, so let's see. Uh, 3x minus 3. And what I always, always like to do uh, when I'm graphing two things, I always like to change it. So if you keep clicking to the left and uh, it's highlighting right here, like you can see, uh, just hit enter and it changes it to a dark line. You can uh, keep hitting enter and it'll uh, change how that graph kind of looks. So let's hit graph now. See how I kind of get that darker line. So that's my second line. I know which one I'm looking at. Okay. Um, so I kind of see here like, okay, where is it intersecting? Well, it looks like they're the exact same. It's just you know, our second one is kind of like moved down a little bit. That's because our slope, if we notice here, my slope is the exact same, three and three. So I'm gonna put these two, I'm just gonna kinda of, uh, put them on our graph a little bit. So let's see what we have. Uh, minus three, up three over one. Okay, up three over one, up three over one. All right, and then got kind of lazy on that downward one and then my uh, first one 3x plus 4 so it starts right here 1 2 3 over 1 1 2 3 over 1 and all right so our lines have the exact same slope when you had this one they're never going to intersect there's always going to be like this gap that they have they're never going to intersect um, and so what we say here is that there is going to be no solution. They're independent of each other. They're never going to cross. They're, they're uh, you know, Hunger Games, they are not star cross lovers. Okay. So, I mean, uh, we've gone through this problem. There's no solution. We've gone through um, the one where we had infinite solutions, where they're the exact same line. And we went through our first one where they crossed kind of nicely and we found our answer. So, kind of like three different answers you can kind of see um, but usually you're always looking for where they're intersecting. In this case, they're intersecting everywhere. And in this case, uh, they never intersect. So go ahead, try this problem out. Uh, if you feel like you're good to go, just do it on your own. See where they intersect. So our first line, we're going to hit uh, line 1 right here. So 2x plus 4y equals 12. Subtract 2x, subtract 2x. I have 4y equals 12 minus 2x. Uh, divide by 4, divide that one by 4, divide that one by 4. So now I have y equals 3 minus 1 half x. Okay. And then uh, let's go ahead and graph that one. Again, you can use um, the calculator. I'm going to show you both ways again. So uh, 1, 2, 3, and then down one over two, down one over two, down one over two, and get me a line up here. And then in the other direction. Okay. Um, and now for the second one, number three. Problem number two, so x plus y equals two. Subtract x, subtract x. That cancels out, so y equals, those aren't like terms, so negative x plus two. All right, so my slope is down one over one, negative one, and my rise, or my um, y-intercept is uh, two. So starting here at two, and down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over one, but it keeps going in both directions. So let's get that nice neat line going. Okay, so where is it intersecting? It is, oops, pen please, thank you. It is intersecting right there. So that point is negative one, negative two, and up here, one, two, three, four. So negative 2 comma 4. Go back and check it. So if I have negative 2 here, so negative 2 and a 4 here, so that's going to give me negative 4 plus 16. Well, that is negative 12, so that one works. 
If I had a negative 2 and a 4 here, negative 2 plus 4, well, that's 2. That one also works. Perfect. And now on the calculator, very, very quick. There we go. Uh, I want to put in my two graphs that I had. Oh, my calculator turned off. All right. Two graphs that I had, clear clear out what what is there. All right, my first one was 3 minus 1 half x minus 1 half x. And my second one is going to say negative x plus 2. Make that one dark. Graph. Okay. All right. So again, you can kind of see um, where it's intersecting. So negative 2, 4. You can go to your table. Second table. So negative 2, they're both at 4. Look at that. But I also want to show you um, how you can calculate it. So hit second, calculate. Go over here to intersect, and we're going to see where they intersect. So my first curve, I want to be to the left of where it's intersecting. So you see how my cursor is to the left of it? Okay, and my second curve, I want to move it to where the right of it is intersecting. So you see also it kind of jumped to my other line. But I move my cursor to the right of where that intersection is. Okay, hit guess. You just hit enter. Again, negative 2, comma 4. Um... I think someone told me, let's see if it works, is that if you hit intersect and you hit enter, first curve, it doesn't really matter. Second curve, it doesn't really matter. And then guess, it doesn't really matter. Okay, yeah. I guess uh, in some cases, if you just hit enter, 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 it's going to give it to you uh, real quick as well. So negative 2, comma 4. That's exactly what we found. So that's how to do it on a calculator. All right. Next problem. I really encourage you to try it out on your own. Um, but we're going to do this one on the calculator. Again, you could do it either way that you want. Um, so first one, we need it in slope-intercept form. So 7x minus y equals 6. Subtract 7x. Subtract 7x. Cancels out. Negative y equals negative 7 plus 6. Divide by negative 1. There's an x there. Sorry. Okay, y equals 7x minus 6. And now on the right side, number 2, uh, we have negative 7x plus y equals negative 6. So add 7x, add 7x. So I'm left with y equals 7x minus 6. Okay. And uh, going over to my calculator now. Well, since uh, you can also, you're probably already saying it, I'm going to have the exact same line. The equation is the exact same. That's right. 7x minus 6 and then 7x minus 6. Yeah, we have the exact same line. So what is our answer? If you're saying... It intersects everywhere. That is correct. There is infinitely many solutions. Infinite solutions. Okay. And now for our last one, the reason I've been working with a calculator a lot is because these problems, they get kind of long without a calculator. It's kind of annoying. Um, so... Again, we're looking, this is a practical example of when um, you can kind of see where uh, systems of equations could be useful. So it says, find linear models for each set of data. In what year will the two quantities be equal? So we have to kind of do two things. We have to find y equals mx plus b for our first one, for the year of men and the year of women. We're looking at U.S. life expectancy. So men in 1970 lived seven years shorter than women. That doesn't that did not bode well for me if I was living in the 70s. In the in the year 2000, it's a little bit closer. Um, you know, bridging the gap. 
So men are starting to get uh, a little bit older, a little bit faster than women. So we want to see where the where the men and women are going to basically live the same amount of life. All right. So if usually when you do this, you're going to kind of like create a scatter plot and find the line of best fit. So that's where this linear model comes from. So let me show you how to do that on the calculator. Okay. Let me clear out what I have here on my in my graph. Okay. So you're at the home screen and you're going to hit right here stat. Okay? So we're going to hit stat and we're going to edit what we have here. So go ahead hit edit. All right. So my list 1, L1, that stands for list 1. I'm going to move my calculator a little bit. Um, we're going to put our year. So see, I'm going to put all these years that I have. I'm not going to put 1970. I'm actually going to put zero uh, just because that's my starting point. 1975, well, that's five. 1980, that's going to be 10. 85, okay, I'm not putting 85, so that's going to be 15. And then, whoops, whoops, okay, 15. 20, uh, let's see what else, uh, so 20 plus, okay, so I have to get up to 2,000, so 25, and then 30, okay, my second list is going to be 67.1, 68.8, 70.0, all right, so I'm going to fast forward through this, Seventy-eight point nine, seventy-nine point seven. Okay, so now that I have uh, my lists filled out, we want the equations for these. That's what linear models are. They're um, well, they're lines that represent that data as close as possible. Um, so you know, in all these systems of equations, we've been working with lines. Same deal. You've been working with lines. You we, we want to create lines. So here's how the calculator can help us do that. You're going to hit stat again. Okay. You're going to click over here for calculate. And you're going to go over here to linear regression. AX plus B. It looks like MX plus B. That's exactly what we wanted to create. Okay. And so for my X list, we're going to be using the year. For my Y list, I'm going to be using the min. Okay. And so we're going to kick, uh, don't put anything in here. Don't put anything in here. Just hit calculate. All right. So now I have 0.22. It's saying my A is 0.22 and my B is 67.5. So we're going to put that down and we're going to write it down for the men. So 0.22x plus 67.5. So Y equals 0.22x plus 67.5. Okay, because uh, this was list one, men, that's going to give us list two, and women, that's list three. So we used uh, list one and list two in order to create um, this line. All right, we're going to use it in just a second, but we need to know the women f next. So go back to your calculator. Uh, go and create, go back to stat, calculate. Linear regression number four. And uh, we're going to change list two to list three. And you can see it right here on your calculator. List three is right there. Oh, wait, not that. Uh, so you're going to hit second, three, and it's going to switch it to list three. Our years, we want the years to be the same. And then my Y, what's changing in my Y is that we're looking at the women now. Okay, so now we're going to go down, hit calculate. There we go. So AX plus B, well, A is going to be 0.15, and B, we're just going to say uh, 75.51. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, 75.51. So 0.15X plus 75.5. One. I hope that's what it was. Let me double check. 
Ah, oh, awesome. Okay, so y equals that. So we're going to use those two and we're going to graph them now on our calculator. Okay, so go over here, y equals, so 0.22x plus 67.5. And then in my second one, 0.15x plus 75.51. And remember, make this one dark. Graph it. It's not going to show up probably because uh, it's so far away. Um, so hit zoom. Let's see if it works. So normally I go and the very first thing I do is I hit zoom fit. See if that works. So zoom zero or go down and scroll down to fit. All right, so that's my first line. There's my second line. So I can kind of see them, you know, getting a little bit, inching a little bit closer, but I don't see them intersecting. I know it's going to happen way over here. Um, so I, you know, zoom fit didn't really work. So let's try uh, to zoom out a little bit. So hit number three, zoom out. And if you just hit enter, it'll zoom out for you. Okay. All right, I see stuff. I see how it's getting a lot closer now. Let's try to hit uh, zooming out again. So if you hit enter again, it'll zoom out. There, now I see it crossing. It crosses over here somewhere. So let's uh, calculate it now. Second calc. Remember, we want to hit intersect. And just uh, hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. My intersection is 114 years after 1970, we expect them to be about 92, 93 years old. So uh, 114 years, so 1970 plus 114, so 4, 8, in the year 2084, uh, but we have to go a little bit above that, so because um, uh, you know our decimal was like point like four, I think. So you know, if we just wanted to kind of round it off, you could say 2084 or uh, 2085. Um, you know for sure it's going to be 2085, but uh, men and women they're going to be living about the same age in 2085. So, uh, you know, I'm 25 right now. I'm in the year 2017, or almost in the year 2017, 2016, getting ahead of myself. So 2085 minus 2016. Let's see, what are we going to get? 7, 9, 8, nope, 6. All right, so 69, and then I should be about 9, Five, four, eighty-four. Ooh, so okay. Around this time, I should be living about to. Uh, I'll be about eighty-four years old. So um, my wife and I, at the time, uh, we should be about dying around the same time. That's pretty awesome to know that I'm going to be dying around the same time as my wife. Um, she'll be happy to know that uh, that she'll be my wife in twenty eighty-five because uh, she's not my wife right now. Uh, but really go through these steps. I understand like this list one, list two, list three can be kind of uh, confusing. So just go watch that video again. Pause it in, in particular spots if you get confused. Um, but again, if you ever need anything, if you have any questions, please just ask. This is Mr. Hernandez and I'm always here to help.